Good day, viewers and listeners. I'm your anchor for the organic chemistry class today. And in this class, we shall be talking about introduction to organic chemistry. At the end of this section, you are expected to be able to define organic chemistry. You are supposed to know the historical development of organic chemistry. Likewise, at the end of the class, you must be able to tell us about the sources of organic compounds. Reasons why organic compounds are in abundance. Abundance. And finally, aggregation. To start with, the definition of organic chemistry. Simply, organic chemistry can be defined as the aspect of chemistry that deals with the study of properties of carbon containing compounds. These compounds exclude carbon 2 oxide, carbon 4 oxide, trouser carbon 4, hydrogen trouser carbon 4, cyanide, type cyanide, as well as carbides. Compounds containing these are classified as inorganic compounds. The historical development of organic chemistry can be dated back to the ancient time. We have medicine men extract mixtures of organic compounds from living things, both plants and animals, to treat members of their tribe. Although they never documented this as organic chemistry, but they try as much as possible to keep records of their day-to-day -day activities. And that is why some of us that have been with our grandfather or great-grandfather who are traditionalists, we know that they do have a file in, in form of books where they keep records of their medicine. That is exactly what we are talking about. Let's take for instance the back of willow, willow tree. In the olden days, it is used to treat pains. It is used as a pain reliever, especially when the back is chilled by the patient. Why the bark of symphona tree is used for the treatment of malaria. In the later years, scientists extracted the component of the bark of the willow tree and it was found to contain acetyl phallicine. The major component in aspirin, which is a pain, which is a known pain relieving drug. Why the back of the symphonal tree was known to contain quinine, which is the first anti malaria drug ever to be isolated from plants. In around 18th century, Bacillus classified chemical compounds into two major groups, and the first one, according to him, while the organic compound, while the second part was the inorganic compound. Like other ancient philosophers, he also believed in the theory of vitality, believing that any organic compound must be obtained from either plant and animal by vital force. While inorganic compounds are compounds obtained from inorganic compounds or non-living, inorganic material or non-living. Matter. In around 1828, a student of Babylon called Previola synthesized organic compounds from mixture of two inorganic materials. Actually, his intention was to prepare ammonium cyanide. When he reacted together, silver cyanide solution with ammonium chloride solution. And the result of things were 
a mixture of silver chloride and ammonium cyanide. The mixture is actually separated into two components. The solid component, which is below the flask, and the top layer component, which is a liquid form, known to contain ammonium cyanide. So it separated the mixture into the two components by filtration. In order to concentrate the ammonium cyanide, it subjected it to evaporation by heating it, I mean the filtrate, to about 60 degrees centigrade. And in the end, it obtained a solid residue that was known to contain ammonia, that was known to be ammonia. The first organic compound to be synthesized, carried out by my Frederick Ola by the first organic reaction. And this formed the limelight for the production of several organic compounds up to today from inorganic material. When we get to the sources of organic compounds, we are going to shed more light on this. Now, in addition to this, the uh, inorganic compounds that form the basis of for the production of organic compounds by Frederick Ola, uh, as I said earlier, was a kind of limelight to the discovery of so many or synthesis of so many organic compounds. Now, we are going to be looking at the sources of organic compounds. Where can organic compounds can be obtained? Sources of organic compounds. And the first is living things, which are mainly plants and animals. In fact, thousands and millions of organic compounds have been isolated and are still going to be isolated from living things, mainly plants and animals. Consider yourself as a human being. From your air down to your toes, you are made up of several millions of organic compounds. Mention a view. Your skin contains certain number of organic compounds. Even your muscles, as well as your nails, likewise your blood which contains some components and some part of uh, the classes of uh, foods, I mean carbohydrates, we have the proteins, we have the vitamins, as well as fat and oils. All these four classes of foods are mixtures of several organic compounds. The second source is via crude oil or petroleum. Petroleum is a word obtained from Greek word that from two Greek words Petra Petra in Greece means rock white oleum means oil so in the ancient time or in, this, in, in, in the olden days petroleum was known to, obtain, to be obtained from the rock and that is why it, is known, it was known as rock oil Actually, the formation of petroleum was as a result of some higher sea animals that when they die, they submerge under the sea and they decompose anaerobically by the release of hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons are later joined to the are what later come together to form crude oil or petroleum. And fractional distillation of crude oil or petroleum yield various fractions. Each of these fractions are mixtures of organic compounds. To mention a few, we have the kerosene, the petrol, the diesel, the uh, bitumen, the asphalt, the liquefied petroleum gases, among others. So in our, in, in, in our next class, we shall be discussing fully about petroleum chemistry. The top source of organic compounds is via destructive distillation. Destructive distillation can be either for coal or for wood. I will start by looking at the destructive distillation of wood. The destructive distillation of wood is the eating of wood in the absence of air at about 450 to 550 degrees centigrade in a closed container. And three products are obtained in the process. We have the gaseous products, the gaseous products, 
which consists of carbon 2 oxide, carbon 4 oxide, and methane. While the other products are the liquid products, liquid products, and finally we have the solid residue, which is mainly charcoal. These are the three products of destructive distillation of wood. Now, in the process, the gaseous, the gaseous product and the liquid later separate out into a mixture of steam and gases that when cooled form what is known as distillates. The distillates in turn separate out into uh, pyrolignous acid pyrolignous acid and wood tar. Interestingly, the pyrolignous acid can be processed into acetic acid, methanol, and other products. You can see why destructive distillation of coal of wood is a, is a major source of organic compound because here acetic acid and methanol and other organic products are obtained from pyroligneous acid, which is, which is part of the distillate form when uh, uh, the mixtures of gaseous and, pro and liquid uh, products separate out in the process. The wood tar undergo bifractional distillation from what is called inhibitors. Inhibitors. This inhibitors contain several mixtures of phenols. And remember, phenols are another class of aromatic organic compounds. So you can see now in the end, the solid residue can be processed into activated charcoal, carbon disulfide, and other products. This is why destructive distillation of coal it also prohibits several classes of organic compounds. Then the destructive distillation of coal is the eating of coal in the absence of air in a closed vessel. And in this process, four products are obtained. We have the coal tar, we have the coal gas, we have the coke, and we have the ammoniaca ammoniaca liquor. Interestingly, the coal tar, about more than 200 organic compounds are being obtained from coal tar. Why coal gases usually result that are used as fuel in the smelting of oil? Coal, of course, is a major source of carbon, as we all know, and that is why destructive distillation, as mentioned earlier, is a major source of organic compounds. The fourth source is by synthesis or in some material you find it as innovation. And from this synthesis or innovation, several organic compounds have been prepared in the laboratory, starting from anti-malarial drugs, analgesics, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, anti and to mention a few among other drugs that have been synthesized. All these compounds are obtained from petrochemicals when they are mixed with other things in the laboratory. And that is why up to today, more than 250,000 organic compounds are being synthesized in the laboratory on a daily basis. For instance, the quinine that was extracted from the bark of Sincona tree was later synthesized in the lab. And that quinine can be modified into other products, either by acetylation of the hydroxy group or the uh, or, 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 uh, epoxidation as well as other types of chemical reactions that can be uh, used to derivatize the compound. So these are the major sources of organic uh, compounds. Next, we shall be talking about uh, different type of... Uh, so these are the major sources of organic compounds. Now, we shall be looking at the applications of organic chemistry. One, in the area of textiles, 
there are several textile industries using organic material to produce all these textiles and different kinds of wares that we put on a daily basis. Organic chemistry, the knowledge of organic chemistry has helped in the development and advancement of textiles in recent times. For instance, in the ancient times, people covered the most important and sensitive part of their body with leaves. Later, they graduated into covering those parts using animal skin. And today, we have several and different kinds of textiles or dresses that we put on, thanks to the knowledge of science in organic chemistry and development. Two, we have in pharmaceuticals. As stated under the sources of organic compounds, several drugs have been produced, both in the laboratory and on the large scale industrially from pharmaceutical companies. And if you remember, in the ancient times or in the olden days, if someone has a mere aid, you consult an herbalist. When you get there, the herbalist the also needs consultation using the uh, uh, necessary weapon. At the end, the oracle may reveal that the source of the edict is as a result of your neighbor that was trying to put in some external forces in you. And in that case, you are going to make a profitation. They will make, they will leave the materials needed for the sacrifice, which you either get or you make payment. And after the sacrifice is being made, the abalist might give you a compulsion whether in solid or liquid form and ask you to be taken in, probably morning, afternoon and night, or once daily, depending on the uh, kind of uh, the prescription. At the end of the day, probably the next day, if you are relieved of the edit, you will have believed that it is the work of the oracle from the abalist and you want to make it, uh, a, a, an appreciation. Not knowing that in recent times, a mere edit can be cured by using ordinary paracetamol, among other analgesic or pain relieving drugs. And based, that is based on the prescription of your physician. Remember that not all edicts need or require the use of drugs. There are some edicts that might be as a result of overstress when you stress yourself. And all what you need to do to relieve yourself of that is just to take a bath, take your bath, and eat good food, then take a rest. So pharmaceuticals are actually, uh, organic chemistry has actually helped in the development of pharmaceuticals. Imagine the coronavirus that is ongoing, spreading all over the world. I'm very sure the vaccine that is going to be used to contain the menace, which actually come to from uh, organic chemistry. If you remember, in, 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 at the beginning, we thought it was chloroquine, and chloroquine happened to be an organic compound to mention a view. Then three. Organic chemistry has actually helped in petrochemicals. There are a lot of chemicals that are obtained from petroleum, and these chemicals are called petrochemicals. Take for instance, even your clothes that you put on, some of them are products of petrochemicals, your bath, your plastic. Plastic is one of the innovations, the major innovation of organic chemistry, because there is no way or no history that plastic in any form exists in nature. It is, it is synthesized in the laboratory. Another important major application of organic chemistry is in food, food industries, whereby some organic compounds are added to food as seasoning. Some of them, like flavoring agents, coloring agents, and sweetening agents, among others. So these are some of the applications of organic chemistry. Now the question that comes next is why are organic compounds in abundance? Looking at the nature of any organic compound, you will find one particular element that must be present before you can call a compound an organic compound. And that element is carbon. That is why we refer to carbon as the most essential element to life. Meaning without carbon, no life. It is even much more essential than oxygen and iron in the hemoglobin. So as a result of this, the chemistry of carbon as an element is quite different from the chemistry of other elements. If you look at the carbon atom, where it is placed in the periodic table, you will notice that it belongs to group 14, the first member of that group, and the only non-metallic element in that group. 
in our next edition of this series on uh, chemistry of uh, inorganic compounds. We shall talk more on chemistry of the 14 element. Now, that means carbon has some unique characteristics which no other element might possess. And the first, one of the fair, uh, one of those characteristics of carbon is that it is tetravalent. Tetravalency means ability of an element to form four covalent bonds. That is why when you are writing the structure of an organic compound, each carbon atom must be surrounded with four bonds. Either four single covalent bonds, two single, one double bond, one single, one triple bond. But note that a carbon atom must be surrounded with four covalent bonds. This is one of the reasons why organic compounds exist in large quantity. The second reason is what we call catenation. Catenation is the ability of an element to form strong single covalent bonds of long chains with itself. And you see that there are several organic compounds that are classified in this category, which we call straight chain organic compounds. That's why we have compounds containing up to 10 carbon atoms on the straight chain, as in the case of the K, 20 elcosane, 30 triacontain, 40 tetracontain, among others. Up to 40 carbon atoms linked together with single covalent bonds on the straight chain. And we have several organic compounds in this category. We refer to them as branching, both of which belong to the an aquatic class of organic compound. Another element that can readily catenate, apart from carbon, is sulfur, as found in rhombic sulfur containing eight atoms of sulfur joined together with single covalent bonds. So, with the exception of carbon and sulfur, no other element can undergo what is known as catenation. The third reason being that carbon forms multiple covalent bonds with itself and other elements. And that is why we have several organic compounds in this category. The one you refer to as akin, to be precise. We have several organic compounds in this category. The alkynes, we have several organic compounds in this category. The carbonyl compounds, or the carbonyls, we have the nitrites, Carbon nitrogen triple bond. We have the imines, carbon nitrogen double bonds. You have the carbon sulfur double bonds, among others. You can see millions of organic compounds can be obtained from each of these categories. This is one of the reasons why organic compounds exist in large quantity. Another reason is that carbon exhibits three types of hybridization. That is very surprising. We have the SP, the SP2, and the SP3. Because we are dealing with organic chemistry, and carbon is the point of action. And as a result of that, we must focus well on carbon. Although there are other types of hybridization in organic chemistry, such as SP3D, SP3D2, SP2D, among others.